We've all been there. It's Friday night. Your Domino's pizza is in the oven and you cannot wait for that cheesy, delicious goodness. So your eyes are glued to the Domino's tracker. But how does the tracker even know that your pizza is on its way? Let me give you my best guess. And if you can believe it, a Domino's software engineer even showed up and told me that I was right. I used to work as a software engineer at Domino's. No way. Am I close? Looks pretty close to what I remember. Let's go, baby! I think there's like this interesting set of interactions here where you might think this system is incredibly complicated. You might think that it's incredibly simple. It's hard to tell. It depends on where you are on like an engineering experience background. So our goal here is I'm going to try to explain this concept in three different levels of difficulty. Uh, difficulty one will be for complete beginners. Difficulty two will be for intermediate programmers that are sort of just wondering how the systems maybe get split up in the real world. And then version three is like, if you were going to try and implement this, what would you need to know? We start in the glorious land of our user's computer. Okay. And our user wants to be able to talk to Domino's and tell them, hey, Domino's. I want to place an order for some pizza. So this is going to go to the Domino's server. And then the Domino's server is going to talk to your local store. Your local store is going to have a computer. We're going to take our order. Let's make this blue. And we're going to say, hey, I want all of this pizza. I want this cheesy bread. I want this stuff. We're going to tell Domino's, hey, please for the love of God, send this to my store. Domino's is going to find your store and they're going to send your order right over. The store is then going to start communicating back this idea of statuses, right? Being like, hey, we got your order. That's great. And then the, the Domino's server is just... Boop gonna send that right over back to you so that you know what's happening with your pizza how does the store know what's part of the process you're on and this is going to be pretty straightforward to anyone that's worked in like a mcdonald's or i guess if you've worked in domino's you know uh they're gonna have these different stations you know like the prep station the oven station or whatever you know where the thing gets baked uh, and like a pickup area. And these three things are all going to have this little bi-directional communication with your store. There's going to be these little computers that they're going to go over to the employees and they're just going to hit a button when they're done prepping your order. That's going to tell the computer, hey, let our user know. And, and that's how it's going to update on our little UI and move from order place to prep to bake, etc. Now, there's this last little bit, and this is pretty new. This is like fairly new on the Domino's tracker, where occasionally, occasionally, they're gonna give you the GPS location of your order, which again, is just gonna be one of these status updates. Now, let's start talking about the next level. Here's your front end which, you know, this could be React, Angular, Vue, whatever, right? This doesn't really matter, but this is like a front-end app that its main goal is just to be able to keep track of your order. It lets you order things, etc. And all of the real logic that we're going to talk about happens on the server side, which this is blue to indicate this is its front-end and everything else is going to be like red generally to indicate the back-end. What happens when it's actually time to place an order? right so where does that go we know it goes to dominoes in some capacity but where do we think this goes so this is probably going to go to some sense of an order placement service right where we're going to send your order over to the order placement service let's move this stuff down and the order placement service is going to do some payment processing stuff we don't really care about that but it's important to note that payment processing is going to happen in here. And then only after it's placed is when the rest of our stuff's going to happen. Okay. 
So now we're almost certainly gonna go to what I'm calling the order dispatch service, okay? And the order dispatch service's job is basically to be able to send this thing down to your store itself. So you might be asking yourself, why does this need a service? And the answer is all in this change I'm about to make, okay? Boop. So this dotted line, we are going to use to signify sockets, okay? Sockets is a fancy way of saying that our front end here, or our store controller here, does not have to keep sending requests to this order dispatch to ask, do we have any new orders? Do we have any new orders? Instead, our order dispatch is going to push that information that we have a new order down to your store. Because you want to be able to push this information, having a service that's going to handle these sockets is really important. Once again, we're going to have our bi-directional communication here. You're going to push this data from the store controller down to these POS systems. So again, these are going to have that idea of sockets that we were talking about before, where we're going to be able to push down this new order to the prep POS system, which is then going to talk back to the store controller, tell it when everything's done, etc. We need this concept of updating. We've talked about it, how we're going to update our order status. And this is going to come. We're going to have a separate service called the order status service. And the order status service is again, gonna use one of these fancy sockets indicated by our dotted lines to push this information back to our front end. We have our general feedback loop. Once again, we have this one big question of this GPS. The reason I wanted to include this is this is definitely the most complicated part or the, the least intuitive part is how do we get this phone involved, right? This GPS, it's almost certainly just an app like the Domino's app or something that they have drivers install and log into. How is this getting our GPS location back to you, right? And most importantly, how is it not telling you where the driver is if they're not working on delivering your order. We have this idea of the delivery service that we are going to basically provide orders for a driver. And we're going to, the store is going to say, we've assigned this order to this driver. The phone is going to make a request get their orders from the delivery service. And then when they start working on your order, it will push an update to the order status service with their GPS location. The only person that knows that they are en route for your pizza is the delivery driver, the person who's using the phone. So they are gonna on the app basically mark, I am working on delivering this order that's how it's going to know to start sending you those updates as opposed to sending it to the person down the block that also ordered pizza. Let's talk about our most advanced version of this. We're going to drill down in our advanced section here into the most detail about what these systems need to use to interact with one another, what data is going to get used, what's going to be sent back and forth, how the data stays up to date, all of that. Let's start by getting a general understanding of what some of this stuff is going to look like. Okay. We've talked about this idea of your order. We've talked about order status. We've talked about sending these status updates, but let's really codify what that's going to look like from an API design perspective. What needs to be tracked, right? What, what is the order? What does the order look like? This one I have Pretty high confidence that this general structure is correct because when I did order stuff at Amazon, this is generally what our orders looked like. So your order is going to have uh, some items. And so you're going to have like some ID for that item. Let's say that is cheesy bread or whatever, right? And then you're going to have like the quantity 
let's say you ordered one cheesy bread and then you're gonna have modifiers okay and so in the case of pizza this is how you would handle things like toppings now what else do we need obviously we need to go know where we're going okay so we're gonna need your address info and that's gonna get stored as like the exact way you fill it out on the form street address line one city zip code etc now we've got the store the store is going to have another unique identifier associated with it and again you just picked this right while you were i mean you've probably done it yourself when ordering at domino's they will ask you to pick what store you're ordering from because they use that to make sure things like the stores are open etc now we got to take a look at order status okay what does the order status look like the order status we're going to treat as basically like an enum okay where your order can be in a few different states right your order could have just been placed it could be in prep it could be in bake it could be in quality check it could be in the delivery state and then i've made an extra state here that i'm calling en route that is how they know that they should start sending you gps updates that the driver is working on your specific order now we have one last thing that we want to define okay and that's what does a status update look like the status update is obviously going to have you know one of these statuses associated with it which we're just going to reference by saying it's an order status it's going to have an order ID associated with it, which is going to be a UUID. We're not going to send the whole order over every time because if I order a cheese pizza and you order a cheese pizza, we want to make sure we're updating the correct status. Like whose cheese pizza is it, right? So we just assign a unique identifier to your order and we use that to process these status updates. Now, the last bit is optional. Okay, this does not always occur, and it's your GPS location or the driver's GPS location, right? Because this is going to get used to be able to give you up to date information on where they are while they're en route to you. So, this will only exist when we are sending an en route order. We have this idea of the order placement service, right? We talked about the order placement service. So what are the APIs for the order placement service gonna look like? We almost certainly are gonna have a post place order. All of the information we need is gonna be sent over by the client. We're basically gonna do the, we're just gonna send this whole thing over to the order dispatch service, I think I called it. And this is going to have a send order or forward order or, huh? Now is where we have our socket. Okay. We talked about this before. The socket is where things get a little bit different, but all it is, is instead of making a request, we're going to push this data down to our store controller. The store controller is going to have this socket connection which again we will denote with a dotted line we're going to send this order over the web socket instead of it being an api request it's going by web socket we have this idea of basically an order received handler and i think the best way that i can kind of explain this is actually through pseudocode with that order it's going to start this whole workflow of sending things down to their appropriate workstations right so we have our prep station because we're going to start with the prep station we're going to push the order to our prep station and then we're going to send this over to our order status service as saying like hey we're in prep we're going to have another connection, another socket connection, and this is going to go to our prep station. 
all this has to do is it has to display this on the screen for someone. And then the order completed handler is going to get called when that person presses their button. We are going to store controller dot complete step. So this is basically going to be an HTTP request. Okay, we don't need a socket for this. We can send a little request. All it's going to do is we're going to have this little handler. First, we have to calculate the next station that it's going to and the next status that it will be in. So let's say that we can do that statically based off of whatever status we're finishing. Prep maps directly to bake. This is a simple state machine. It flows through it immediately. Then we're just going to make sure that we actually push the order to the next station, right? Where now it needs to display on the screen at bake, right? Over by the ovens. Simple, easy. And then the last thing that we have to do is we just have to talk back to our order status service. Now, all we have to do is we have to get this order status update that we defined before. Paste it down here. Boom. It's going to take the status, the order ID, and very simply going to take that and use its WebSocket to talk directly back to our client. And all we have to do now is talk about how we do the GPS. We talked about having this delivery service. After the order's been picked up and it's going into the delivery phase, we're going to call this delivery service. All we care about is we're going to take that order and we're just going to boop and tie them together. All this is doing is it's associating your order and your driver. This is literally just going to take your order ID, which we already have, and it's going to take a driver ID, which I'm just considering this a UUID, but you can imagine that's like their username for their Domino's account that they use to log in. We'll just have one simple endpoint. All it's going to do is a simple get and you're going to get back basically a list of orders. Driver's phone. The driver's phone is going to ask, hey, what deliveries do I have? And then that's it. That's all it cares about. It's going to get those deliveries that they're supposed to be working on. And then the driver is going to basically say, hey, order status service. I am working on this order. Please mark it as en route. And here are my GPS coordinates. This GPS data gets sent to your client from the order status service. Boom. Done. Now, I want to be clear. This is not the smallest thing that you can do to make this happen, but it is very likely how a company like Domino's makes this happen. I used to work as a software engineer at Domino's. No fucking way. Am I close? Looks pretty close to what I remember. Let's go, baby. Oh, that's going in the video. That's going in the video. Let's fucking go. Oh my God. I am hype on that. I am so hype on that. No way. I don't even care if you're lying, man. If you never worked for Domino's, I don't care. I'm using that.